Right, let us prepare for the video of a lifetime. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I am here with zero makeup on because today is my long overdue slash promised skin journey video. So I've mentioned in a few videos that I have been on Roaccutane and had quite bad skin in the past and so I thought I would do kind of like a video on my journey, where I was at, where I'm at now and sort of what I do to kind of keep my skin clear and all of that kind of stuff. So just to begin, this is kind of what my skin is looking like at the minute. I tend to have, if I have breakouts on this side of my face mostly, and you can see it's a little bit redder than this side of my face, but we're generally touching wood spot free at the mo, which is obviously ideal because, um, well, yeah, I just can't go with the fact that dad sat in the, in the office and he can probably hear me moving on. So I'm sort of gonna talk through first my journey with acne and how that's got resolved in sort of chronological order and I'll insert some pics if I have any. And uh, then I will sort of talk through what I'm doing now. I can't guarantee how many pictures I have of when I was younger, but before and while I was on Racky 10, I took a lot of pictures so I can insert some of those. Yeah, I'm just gonna get going and then I'll sort of add bits in as I've gone along. I'm actually using my old phone because I made notes and I'm filming on my new one. So that's why the leaves are, the leaves, the leaves have returned. Okay, so I was pretty lucky and I didn't actually get many spots at all really until year 11. So before this, I had like the odd one, but I didn't get my first major breakout until year 11. And it was during my GCSE, so it was like May, June time. And I remember it so clearly because it was all here over my forehead. It was really bad. And I remember being so annoyed, but in my head I was thinking, everyone always says you get spots when you're stressed. And obviously we were all doing exams. So of course we were gonna be stressed. And I just kept praying. I was thinking when this is over, they're gonna go away and I wouldn't have to worry. Um, because I knew that my mum and sister had had spots at a younger age, but I hadn't got them yet. So I thought, oh, this won't be anything. I won't get them. This will just be stress. They'll go away. And then everything will be hunky-dory and I'll have beautifully clear skin and life will go on as usual. However, that actually didn't happen. And throughout year 12 and year 13, my spots sort of spread to the point where they were kind of all over my face, like as in like cheeks, chin, that kind of area. And I suppose there was, it became less on my forehead. Like they kind of moved from literally like where you, like where teenage spots are like sort of here, they moved to all over my cheeks. And that's mainly where I got the most of my spots. So we have had to re reset the tripod because it's got a life of its own. Is that better? Okay, we'll leave it there. So sometime in year 13, I went to the doctors because I was done with my skin. It was so bad. I was so unhappy with it. And I knew that if you go to the doctors, they can either put you on medication or give you spot cream. And just to add in, at this point, my sister had already used and been on Roaccutane. So I obviously knew, like, if spots don't go away, you need to go to the doctors because they're, they're only going to get worse. And I had kind of had this information. So I was like, right, okay, I'm 18 now. I just need to get a grip on this because... You're not really that, well, you are still hormone at 18, but it's not quite the same as like when you're like 15, 16. You know, you should really be coming out of like that teenage hormonal acne. So I went to the doctors and I have to say, this isn't the case of most doctors, but out of all of the doctors I've seen about my skin, the first doctor I saw was the least helpful, I would say. Um, in fact, all the doctors I've seen since have been phenomenal. And I think he was kind of a bad experience so I will just say if you do have a bad experience with someone that's not that helpful I would just keep going back and seeing someone else because all the docs I've had since have been phenomenal um but yeah I went to the doctors and he put me on oxytetracycline which if anyone ever offers you that for your skin I doubt they will don't go on it it doesn't really have any bad side effects but I'm pretty sure and I probably should check this before I started filming you have to take a little <laughs> oxytetracycline four times a day it was two tablets four times a day and you could only take you had to uh take them either one hour before food or two hours after food 
So just to put that in perspective, so, so four times a day, but they had to be either one hour before food or two hours after. So it was almost impossible for me to get all four doses in every day. And in fact, I don't think I ever did. I probably took these tablets for about a week, if that. Because bearing in mind, like at this point, I was 18 years old. I probably wasn't getting up my alarm. And I didn't give myself that much time in the morning to get ready. So for me to actually be able to eat in the morning, there wasn't time for me to take these tablets. And they just became impossible to take. Um, so I just left it. I didn't go back to the doctors. I don't even think he put me on a cream, a spot cream. No. So that was all that he gave me. He gave me oxytetracycline and I didn't take it. I took it for about a week and not properly and I just couldn't keep up with it. So I just left it. I didn't see it through. I didn't get a repeat prescription or any of that. So that was that. It was kind of at this time when I started to notice I was getting really bad, like back acne. And that was, I think, the worst for me because you can't cover that up really, especially because I dance all the time. Like in leotards, it was so on show. And there was nothing I could really do to cover it up. And I think that's when people, it was almost worse on my back in a way because it was just all in the same place. It was all across the back of my shoulders. It was so annoying. But at the same time, I had so much to do. Like year 13 is such a busy year with like applying for uni and exams and everything. Like I just didn't really have time to go and sort it out. My A levels finished in the May and over the summer, my skin just miraculously cleared up. When I say, um, you can't really see it now that badly, but if you look at my cheeks, you can still see I have got a really minor amount of scarring. Um, but during the summer of year 13, I only had scarring. So when I had makeup on, my skin looked completely clear. Without makeup on, it looked like I had spots, which it doesn't really, it's kind of a testament to how far my skin's come now, because if you looked at me now, you probably wouldn't say, oh, but if you looked at me without makeup on in, in that summer, which was the summer of 2018, I looked like I had spots even though I didn't but with makeup on my skin was completely clear so I was like this is a miracle this is a miracle this is amazing all my problems have been solved and life is wonderful I'm just looking outside because the weather is going darker which means I think the lighting is getting worse so just to bear that in mind if the lighting suddenly gets darker that is why because I'm chose the worst time of the day that I could possibly film <laughs> this video is just <laughs> I waited all the time to film that and it's just been a car crash guys so that was that and I can't really remember when it started to get worse again but I'm pretty sure is when I started foundation so for any of you who don't know I did a musical theatre foundation course in a college in London so I went from dancing probably two to three hours a day uh was that about right yeah a pop at least an hour a day but up to three hours on a really busy day to dancing from eight in the morning or nine in the morning till five at night and sweating in makeup and just kind of having to reapply it as well like you, there's an expectation that you if it comes off that you put it back on and obviously that's kind of just you're sweating into that makeup and then reapplying and it was just a whole it's a whole thing so my skin went from being completely clear to then having acne again and my back acne was really bad again and everything had sort of just gone back to exactly where it was I suppose that being back at starting a new course, starting a new college in a new city, in a new area of the country. It was quite a lot of stress, I imagine. Well, it was a lot of stress. And obviously, as a foundation course, what you're doing is you're preparing to get onto a degree. So you're also preparing to audition again. So it's, it's kind of like the same level of stress, if not more, that I had during my A-levels. And so obviously, well, not obviously, but my acne came back. And this time I just thought, okay, no, we're not doing this. I had friends who had been on other drugs. I had friends that had been on Roaccutane. So I moved in to my um like uni halls kind of thing. And two of my friends there, or three of them, had been on Roaccutane. And they were saying that like, it's life changing. Annie and Callum had literally just come off Roaccutane like in that September. So they were like, it's changed my life. You need to do it. And I thought, my skin's not really that bad. But I do, or I didn't think it was bad enough to go on Roaccutane. But I was like, I do need to do something because this is just silly. So I went to the doctors and I had the most amazing doctor I've ever had in my entire life. Um, I'm not at that stage anymore, but he was just the nicest guy ever. And I went in and I said, look, this is my skin. Obviously, you can see it. It's quite bad. I've been on oxytetracycline. And the first thing he said was, 
why did he put you on that? He was like, that's such an out-of-date drug. I don't even know anyone who prescribes it anymore, which is why I'm saying you probably won't. Um, he was like, that's just that's just so difficult to get right. Like He was just like, that's such a waste of time. And I did obviously mention that my sister had been on Roaccutane. And funnily enough, that actually ended up in my notes because every time I went to see someone else, they always said, oh, your sister's been on this drug, hasn't she? So I will just say, like, I I never thought anything of it at the time, but they kept that in my notes and they said that every time. And I actually think it kind of made the process faster because I think they knew that I knew what I was talking about when I spoke about this drug and I had obviously the information. And I went back three times before they put me on it. And every time they said, your sister's been on this drug. In fact, no, I only went back twice, but I'll get to that. I'm skipping ahead, I'm getting excited. So um, I had a friend at the time who'd been put on Lymocycline and she said it's changed my life it worked it was amazing blah 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 and i actually have the box here for the sake of the video i will pop one out it looks like this and i've actually recently been put back on this but i'm not currently taking it but i will get to that so i had a friend who was on lymocycline and she and she said it's life-changing like i've got no spots at all um, that and Lizzo cleanse and polish has changed my life like you need to get on that and he offered me that and I snapped it up because I didn't want to go on Maracutane I actually didn't want to because I know it's it's kind of quite an extreme way to go um, and I thought this is going to work and this is going to be brilliant however at the time I couldn't take I couldn't swallow tablets whole I used to like break paracetamol in half and obviously there's no way you can break this in half because it's a capsule other than I used to empty it into water and try and drink it but it actually tasted disgusting. And I obviously never got the full dose because when you do that, some of it's gonna be left in the glass. So I never had the full dose, but I also hated taking it because it tasted so disgusting. So that probably didn't help. Um, but my skin did not clear up. I probably went on Lymocycline in about November time. It made no impact on my skin. And then I was kind of into like January and back to auditions that so kind of went on the back burner. But I did find that um, getting one of those like shower scrubby things and like properly cleaning my back that properly the same way that I clean the rest of my body every single night really helped my back acne to start to clean up, clean up, clear up even before I went on Roaccutane. And then in the summer, or was it in the summer? No. After I came back for the final three weeks of that, college year because the foundation courses in MT tend to finish in about the May time. So in about April, my auditions were over. I was all sorted for the next year. So I went to the doctors and I said, look, this really isn't working. The Lyme cycling isn't working. I really have tried, but it's not working. And I explained, like, I can't really take it probably if I'm honest, but I've given it my best shot and it's not really working. And then they gave me this, which is differin which is a one percent gel and the doctor said your sister's been on romacutane hasn't she and i said yes and she looked at this cheek my right cheek which is where i get the worst of my acne i don't know why because i actually sleep on this side so it makes no logical sense but she said this cheek is like severe enough to qualify to go on romacutane but this cheek had like three spots on she was like i don't think i'm gonna be able to do it so she sent me away with this and she said, this is like the topical version of Aracutane. And she used this alongside the tablet in the meantime to see if that made any difference. But when I first started using this gel, it made my skin sting quite badly. And so when I would go to put my makeup on first thing, because you're only supposed to use this at night, I'd go to put my makeup on first thing and it all under my eyes, it would burn. So I stopped using this as well. And so I actually went back to her and I said, look, I've tried, this isn't working. This is making my skin sting. And I, the Lymocycline isn't working. The only thing I knew was whenever I would start taking Lymocycline again, my nose, like the pores would feel instantly so much smaller. Like my nose would become so smooth and like poreless. But my skin, my actual acne never got any better. So I was like, I just don't think it's working. And it was at this point, she said, okay, I'm going to refer you to go on Racutane. So I was like, oh my God my problems are solved so that was in april and i went on varacutane in may now what i didn't know and they did tell me this at the time but i didn't realize how much worse my 
um, skin was going to get when I went on by Rakitane. It went from being like quite bad on this side and okay on this side to just being horrendous in the space of a month. Um, and I don't know if I have any pictures of when it was really, really bad because I don't think I could even bear to take a picture at that point. But my skin did get quite significantly worse in the first month. But they do say like it has to get worse to get better because it's sort of like flushing out toxins and what have you. So I was kind of prepared for that, but not really. And obviously they tell you all the side effects, like don't go in the sun, your skin gets really thin, blah, blah, blah. They, they are quite severe and I think you just have to prepare yourself for that. Um... I struggled the worst with just it mainly it getting worse first. That was the biggest thing that I noticed. And my skin got very thin. So I would get really easily get paper cuts. Or even if, you know, cardboard boxes, like if I just brushed my hand against those, I wouldn't bleed, but I would definitely scratch. And I always had scratches on my arms from where I would brush up against a door or anything. Like my skin was so thin and it would so easily like scratch. It wasn't even necessarily cuts, but like it would scratch so easy and when i first went on like i can't explain how it kind of worked but like my makeup would almost like slide off my skin i mean it was summer so it was quite hot but it would literally like slide off nothing would last at all and obviously initially putting makeup on would make it look better but not long after it would just look so much worse because my makeup was honestly sliding off my face i have to say my lips were never that bad so I started wearing, using like wearing Vaseline straight away because I knew everyone else's lips had just crumbled and I was using it so much every day. I never had, um, like when you're, you get like a cut at the side of your mouth, I never had that. And I started using um, Carmex instead and I just preferred that so much more. And I, so that was actually kind of, I'd put less Carmex on than I would Vaseline because you can't really get as much out. And I was always okay. In fact, the last like two months I was on Rorakitane, I barely even used lip balm, which is saying a lot because most people have to religiously put it on like every, like really, really frequently. I remember when I, it was about June and I went on holiday to Malta, I was putting it on and I was wearing like, lip balm a lot then but it sort of got a lot I didn't have to wear it I found that like I'd forget to put it on oh and my lips would be fine they wouldn't be really really chapped so I actually really didn't struggle with that like I know most people do but I think that was kind of quite a um unique thing for me not to struggle with it that badly like at all I don't think I ever I don't think they ever really like Broke. they became quite tight but they never actually like split or anything my side effects did get a little bit worse because my dosage got more so i started on 40 is it milligrams 40 something i'm gonna say milligrams but i don't know i may have started on 30 i can't remember what i do know is they do it by your body weight first so they weigh you and then whatever your body weight is is how they measure what you'll start on I at first thought it was going to be, this is kind of like backtracking, but I just thought I'd pop it in. I obviously couldn't take um, capsules at this point and there is no way you can break a Rakuten tablet. If you split it, it's worth less, you may as well throw it in the bin. So I was like, this isn't going to work, but I did take my first prescription anyway and tried it. And I think I actually must have started on 30 because I had the 20 milligram capsules, which are bigger and the 10, which were smaller. So I must have started on 30. And I actually found that while I couldn't swallow the 20 milligram, I could swallow the 10. So I actually just went back to the pharmacy and I said, please, can you give me all in 10s? And they did. And they were so helpful in that way. So if you're the same as me, the 10s are tiny. They're like this big. And at the beginning, I took them all in 10s. But by the time I actually finished my treatment, I was taking them all in 20s. So just a little side note, if anyone can't take tablets, um you can you it will be fine because you can take the tens and i think and they're like the size of a pea so if you can swallow a pea hole you'll be able to swallow those and actually i can take tablets now and that's only because of a racket tank so i was taking like three a day i just got so used to the sensation i actually can take tablets now so that's actually been probably the biggest plus other than my skin so where are we so like i said it got a lot worse in the first month but what i did notice is like annie told me it would that 
your spots get so much worse but your actual skin feels better now that sounds so stupid but i knew that like behind the spots the actual skin had improved so much even within a month and that was so encouraging and obviously it got a lot worse for the first month but every time i saw my friends after that they'd be like oh my god your skin looks so much better every time and even though i took pictures i never felt like i could see the difference but every time any of my friends saw me they said your skin looks so much better your skin looks so much clearer so that was such a comfort and it's like really reassuring and then if i looked back on pictures from like i don't know three months before when i was getting further into my treatment i would just be so happy with how far it had come so i went on in the may and i came off which is the fifth yeah so i was on racutane for six months they said four to six but you have to go back to the doctors every month for them to check that you're doing okay and if you're a girl to take a pregnancy test it's just part of the like um side effects that you need to just check every month that you're not pregnant um so you just have to go back and they kind of set up how you're doing blah 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 because if you don't know, the really serious side effect of Rakitane is that it can have a really bad impact on some people's mental health. So they always say, like, if it does have a bad impact, you to come off the drug straight away and they check in with you every month to see how you're doing and to make sure that that doesn't happen. And obviously there's a lot of really, really bad press around it, which can be really frightening. But my doctor just told me, like, it's actually really rare that happens. That's why we check in with you. You know, we're not going to let that happen. So don't even worry. Like, this is why we're so strict on it now um because of things that have happened and i kind of i know i've known so many people that have been on it at this point that wasn't such a worry for me but i know that for other people that's been quite a significant concern of theirs so just to put it in perspective um my skin got a lot better but even three or to four months in i still had some spots and i remember my dermatologist who actually was such a good he was such a good guy like he was so nice he was saying like you actually shouldn't be getting spots at this point in like it wasn't bad acne but i would have like maybe three spots and he was like you should have completely clear skin at this point so i was like oh um and so he actually put me on a second drug which i can't remember the name of to take alongside it and i think i took it twice and at my next appointment he was like how are you getting on with that second drug and i was like i'm gonna be brutally honest i haven't taken it but my skin had just cleared on its own so i had no spots at this point and he was just really happy with my skin and he said that you know he was like it's okay like that's a lot of drugs to take a day so it's okay if you don't know the way Rakitane works is it stops the oil production in your body so it stops your body producing oil which stops you making spots what that also does is stops your hair getting greasy if there's one thing that i miss on being on Rakitane, it's how clean my hair was all the time it never got greasy i mean if i was if i had things to do and i couldn't wash my hair it still wouldn't get greasy i don't know how long i've ever left it but it never got greasy not even a smidgen i would just wash it to be clean not because it needed washing i wash it because we sweat every day and i just want clean hair but when i, I can't express how it never got greasy <laughs> like never i reckon i could have left it the whole time i was on racutane and it would never have got greasy i actually did stop washing my hair as much as i usually would because i'm it was getting quite dry and brittle and i didn't want it to break off and all fall out so i wouldn't wash it um i probably wash it half the time half the amount of time that i usually would just because it didn't need it and i wanted to kind of protect my hair at the same time and i can't i used hair masks and stuff at the time and then i even start that's when i started first using olaplex as well because i just really felt like my hair needed the help because it was so dry from the fact that there was zero oil so i think that's kind of everything that happened i came off racutane in november 2019 and i don't think i got a single spot until uh february march of 2020 so i had they say you have like a six months free pass mine wasn't that long but then i was only on the drug for six months and some people are on it for much much longer so that could be why um because it's still in your system for a while so all of the things that happen while you're on Rakuten, like the your hair's not greasy, your lips are dry, that does continue while you first come off it because it's still in your system. Um, like it's very harsh on your liver 
uh, the drug and that's why you're not supposed to really drink or anything while you're taking it because obviously your liver spending all of its time trying to break down this drug and it doesn't really have that much time for anything else so uh, you can like have a glass or two but they avoid they say to avoid like binge drinking while you're taking maracutane because obviously it's hard on your liver and that sort of continues for the couple of months that just follow i got my first spot i'd say in about february and we went into lockdown in march and part way through lockdown i had quite a bad breakout and i was really gutted it was towards the end of summer so probably about june time so i'd been off the drug about six months i keep saying the drug i don't know why what else would you call it the, me the medication whatever for about six months and I got quite a bad breakout. I had quite a lot of spots on my forehead. I had some on my cheeks. It's generally in this area. I don't know why this side of my face, the scarring's not as bad, like nothing's as bad on, on this side of my face, but I had a general breakout in here. I was gutted and it didn't really clear at all until I went, so I went back to uni in September. And in November, I went back online with cycling this year and I took, it throughout November and I was quite consistent with it and then um did in fact it did make my skin worse again a little bit worse I felt like I had a bit more of a breakout once I actually started the medication I mentioned to you guys in some vlogs that I was back on it and I'd see how it went I've actually stopped taking it again because I came home for Christmas I completely forgot and my skin's cleared up so I don't know if this will be um a miracle cure I don't know if this will be long lasting i'm hoping it is and i'm hoping that just the upheaval and it was a little blip in like i've been off it quite a while and i'm hoping that's all it was and that's why i kind of put off filming this video because i did actually really really want to film with clear skin because i just felt like i didn't want to have been through all of this and then still not have clear skin when i filmed it and I remember like when I was had bad acne and people on Rakitane who'd been on Rakitane would have one spot and they'd be like, I'm just gutted. I wouldn't understand. But I think once you put your body through that and it's a long six months, it's a lot of doctor's appointments, like there's one every month. And that's I know it doesn't seem much, but it kind of is if you're not used to going to the doctors very often. And it, it takes quite a toll. And I think I wouldn't say that I was affected that badly with my mental health, but I think looking back, everything was that smidgen harder while I was on my Rakitane than it is now and I don't know if that was to do with that or whether it was just a coincidence but I do, I do think now looking back everything just seemed that like a little bit harder during the six months that I was on it and I do actually feel like I can see a significant difference now that I'm off it and I've been off it and I feel a lot better so I don't know if that is a coincidence or whether that is an actual side effect but I know that most of the people who I speak to said when they came off they noticed a difference I don't think you really necessarily notice it when you, it's going on but afterwards I think a lot of us said that we did notice a difference so it's sort of something to bear in mind that just to be that little bit kinder to yourself if you are going on it these so when I first went on Rorakitane I watched Katie Snook's series she did like oh, every month she did a checkup and like an update and she used La Roche-Posay products and so the minute I started on my treatment these are the first thing I went out and bought I initially just got the Ethiclar H range which is specifically made for people on like Roaccutane or that kind of uh I forgot to mention in America I think they call it Accutane don't they but the medication I was on was, was labeled Roaccutane so but this is made for It says it's tested on oily, acne-prone skin, but on the box it says something like what used when with acne medication or something along those lines. And it's made for like really thin, sensitive, dry, because obviously no oil production skin. And I had the moisturiser and the what's this? cleanser. I still use both of these all the time. So this is like a wash-off cleanser. It's a, it's a bit more liquidy than like Liz Earl. It comes out like this and it's just sort of like soapy. You wet your face, rub it in and then wash it off. And I have never had a cleanser which makes my skin feel as like completely clean, smooth and fresh as this. And I think I'm just always going to use this now because I think I'm always going to have acne prone skin. And I think this is just, if you have 
acne or spots or problematic skin of any kind this i honestly is my saving grace that i will i think i'll always 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 use this and this moisturizer was just the best ever you use it up quite fast i won't lie and i think they're quite expensive they're like 16 17 pound for each product this is quite like a thick moisturizer if i just put some on my face it doesn't really go very far like that little blob just about covers half my face it doesn't really go very far at all but it's so hydrating and i think when you're on the medication you absolutely need this like it's just the oh, the nicest most hydrating moisturizer ever and it sort of it really just instantaneously just like re-injects your skin with hydration so they're like my holy grail if i could only have two products while i was on the medication i would have those as i spent more time on the medication i also had this which is the effaclar toner and this says micro exfoliant and anti-blackheads i still use this now i've almost out this is so nice and cooling i don't know why but it doesn't matter even if it's in a warm room like it's always so nice and cooling on the skin it doesn't i don't think it was as effective as the other two it's just nice and then when i came off Roaccutane, I was really intrigued to try the Effaclar Duo, which I don't have with me today, which I think is like their most popular product. And I actually got the one with SPF 30 in because I didn't have the normal one in when I got it. And I didn't really gel with that, I'm on if I'm honest. I much preferred the Effaclar H to the Effaclar Duo. I just didn't really like it. I didn't really get on with it. And I thought, right, I won't be getting that again. Um, I probably have to rebuy the moisturiser once a month maybe once every six weeks i don't know it doesn't last that long but it's just i think it's worth spending the money on i just i oh, can't wait enough so the last time i went or the last two times i went to buy my new products i saw this which is the effaclar k and this is what the effaclar duo bottle looks like just as a comparison, it's a lot longer and thinner. And the Effaclar K is for oily skin, renovating care, antioxidation, anti-sebum, eight hour. And on the box, they always say different things on the box to on the tube. Wait, I do have the box in here. So it says, tested on acne, test on oily acne prone skin, blackheads, irregular skin, irregular skin texture and shine. So this is what the Effaclar K is for. And it also said anti-blemish, so like, to kind of get rid of those scars and whatever this is much thinner this has more this this is more much more like the effaclar duo it's much thinner in consistency and it goes a lot further on the skin like that was an even that was a much much smaller amount than the um the effaclar h and it just moves so much further on the skin and i think now i'm off this is my last and i've got the smidgen left in this this is my very last one and if i'm honest i don't think i'll purchase it again i think i'll stick to this this is so much more hydrating than the duo in my opinion and if you have kind of bad skin or ish bad skin i just think this is the one it's just a little bit thinner it's not quite as thick it lasts longer because it's thinner and it goes further so if you're on a kind of budget this is actually cheap like better value for money i reckon and it gives me the same kind of hydration as this one. Whereas for me, the duo didn't hydrate my skin at all. It always felt really dry after. So that's on that. These products were a lifesaver to me during and kind of like now after my Roaccutane journey. But I have a few things, a few skin products that I'm using now as well as these. Sort of now I've finished my treatment and I will talk you through these. So like I mentioned before, um... When I finished my Rakitane in November, I said I had really bad scarring. Um, it's not, I was really lucky. I only had like red marks. I didn't have any um, sort of like pits in my skin. I was so lucky in that way. But they, it was quite bad for quite a long time. I would especially have them here um, where I had the most of my acne. And so I did a lot of research online and I only have one of them here. But I was really advised by like different YouTube channels that had acne scarring to use this, which is the vitamin C suspension from The Ordinary. 
and also the niacinamide one percent the niacinamide was for me just phenomenal had loved that product so much i have actually run out and haven't replaced it so um i love that that was just so easy to use you just dropped it on with like one of these little pet things and it was amazing i really really saw a huge difference with that this is a vitamin c suspension this is wow <laughs> this is a lot harder to use um gosh it really has gone dark now i hope you've liked it like eee, it's making you tired because it's getting darker in this video um this was a lot harder to use because it's really unstable so if i was to just put it on my skin on its own it would make my skin like f um it would like come off it was like really weird it would like flake off not flake that's like almost as if like when you rubbed it off it would come off i can't explain i don't know whether it was a product or my skin it never caused me any damage it was just annoying because i'd do my skin routine and then half an hour later i'd be like okay now i need to wash my face um they advise you to mix this with a mix it with a moisturizer but not with a moisturizer that has ni um, niacinamide in because they don't work well together and these both these moisturizers actually do have niacinamide in because they actually help you these themselves help you to get rid of acne scarring and blemishes and that's what niacinamide is used for so obviously they did have it in so i would mix if i was going to mix it with a moisturizer i'd have to use a different one i i think it kind of worked i wouldn't buy this again just because it was so difficult to fit in especially because the products i love have niacinamide in and i love the niacinamide as well but honestly if you have acne scarring any products look for if your moisturizer has niacinamide in or if not find one that does use the the ordinary it was so affordable it was worked so well and it got rid of my scarring amazingly just a couple more products that i use before you leave and abandon because this video has been going on and on one product i've been loving is garnier rose soothing toner this is so soft and like gentle on the skin i love this i tend to always use this like straight after i've washed my face um unless i've run out then i'll just turn to this i love using this if say it's part way through the day i kind of want to freshen up that like before I did this video, I'd already done my skincare this morning, etc, etc. But I just used a bit of this, cleansed my face and then put moisturiser on just ready for the video. It's kind of like that nice, refreshing feeling, super kind on the skin. I'm back, I forgot a product. <laughs> I left it on the bath. And the only other two products I've been using, I've been using since September. And these are Tropic products, which I spoke to you about before. The first one is the Clear Skin Blemish Fighting Mask. And the second one is the Pure Lagoon. And I have to say, I actually love these so much. I think out of all of like the serums and stuff that I'm using, a lot of the stuff that I've just showed you, I haven't been using so recently. I would say I use those kind of up to the like, summer of last year. And since then, it's mainly been these three and my la roche posay products that i've been really reaching for I, was, I haven't really used any of my ordinary products since then the this pure lagoon is a blemish prevention serum and honestly when i first started using this i mentioned to you that i went on lamicide clean in november um but when i first started using this product in september my skin completely cleared like completely um I was just using this every day. You just have like a couple of drops and this completely cleared my skin. I did have a breakout since, which is then when I thought, okay, I need to go back on medication because I didn't want this to get out of hand again and have to go back on my Accutane. I wasn't prepared to do that. But this initially did clear my skin and I've been using this since while my skin's been clear. And I have to say, I think this is just amazing. Like I've really noticed a difference since using this. And then this is a clear skin fighting mask and it's like this, it's green. It's just a face mask. And I was using that clay mask before and now I've started using this. And again, I do think this actually really works. I wouldn't put any product in this video that I didn't genuinely think worked. But any time I've ever had, particularly at the minute, um, a lot of spots on my, around my mouth area, obviously. The minute I use this, like in the days that follow, any spots I've had from like my mask, like mask wearing or whatever, this has actually cleared as well. I think out of the two of them, this is probably my go-to just because it's every day. I really have seen such a difference in my like red marks as well. I feel like it helps get rid of those really quickly. Um, they're not the two cheapest products ever. This is £42 and I think this is 20 But I don't think I'd be without them now in my skincare collection. So I think if I had to say Holy Grail, 
I would say these and also this which I mentioned much earlier in the video just to finish on I mentioned to you earlier that this left my skin stinging so badly when I was using it and so I did initially stop but um when I started to get little breakouts this year I started using this gel again and honestly you put it on a spot and it it just it stops it from blowing up it stops it from going mad it makes it come straight back down and I think I know this is the one thing that I still use which is prescription for my skin um and obviously I don't use it every day because I only use it if, if and when I have a spot so it's not something I use every day but I do think that this makes a huge difference and so I think even if you just have regular spots this is the differing 0.1% gel I really recommend just maybe speaking to your doctor and even like mentioning like I've heard of this gel I've heard of that gel what do you recommend obviously always take their advice but sometimes going like ready armed and prepared is so helpful and I know that trying to get on my Rakitane can be so difficult and it's such it, like for me it was at least four appointments if not five just to even get referred but I would just say keep pushing on and keep stressing how important it is to you because I was told, tell them you're a dancer, tell them that this is your everyday, you know, um, this affects you every single day, this affects your confidence, this affects your happiness, because it does, and it's not worth, you know, having certain doctors, and they're so rare, but telling you it's just hormonal, because when I went to speak to all the other doctors after my first one, they said, yeah, it is hormonal, but it's also chemical, and that chemical, that imbalance kind of, that issue with your oil production that's what needs to be sorted out you know very rarely do they just go does acne go on its own especially when you have it in your really late teens if this is your message that you need to go and sort it you need to go and sort it because i don't know my skin is not always clear and you get so used to it don't you when your skin's bad and you just think well, it's always going to be this way and you kind of get okay with it you get complacent with it and you get happy with it but then when your skin clears up i promise you you'll just think why did i not do this sooner because it's so worth it um that has been the longest video I've ever made in my life but I just felt like I had a lot to say and yeah I hope it was really helpful for at least one person because that would make me really happy. I will link all of the videos that I've seen about Raraki Tane. I'll link all of Katie Snook's videos down below because they're so helpful like while you're going through it or before you go on it to see what it's like because obviously everyone searches and hers are like documenting it at the time, which I could never have done because I just wouldn't have had the confidence to don't think film at that point. Um, they're so helpful. And I'll link all the products that I spoke about in the um, description box below. Oh my God, my, my brain is fried. Yeah, it's mad to me now. And I actually feel lucky every single time I wake up and I look in the mirror and my skin is clear because I do get spots more than i would like to say um i am so grateful that it's clear because there was a time when i didn't think it ever would be clear and like the fact that my scarring is really gone so significantly as well like that there is a little bit i had a spot here last week you can still see the scar so it's not perfect but it's so much better now than it was and yeah i just feel like i'm so grateful for every single one of my friends that encouraged me to go on rakitane because it changed my life and i wouldn't do it again because it was hard but it was 100 percent worth it and i'm glad i definitely did it once so i hope you enjoy that if you're not on the rakitane or you're not planning on going on it and you're just watching it because you're here every week then thank you <laughs> for sitting through all of that i hope you enjoyed it and maybe you got to know me a little better um i think i'll do my q a next week if you have any questions pop them in the comments down below what else just thank you all for coming for supporting if you're a new viewer if this video has helped you to find me then i hope you enjoyed my channel please subscribe and become part of the club i'm so happy that i'm making these videos and that you're all here every week and yeah i'll see you next sunday 10 a.m